with the success of uh, the last Maguire's post with LJ Garcia Civic, um, I don't know. Like, it's uh, pretty crazy because I never expected the car to get that type of reaction. I thought it was only, like, us older guys that cared about it, and uh, the post blew up. Like, I'm glad that the photos did so well and was able to pull so much emotion and reaction out of people. I'm pretty stoked about it. So I decided, I talked to Angel, and and right after, right after the post went up, I decided that it would be a really cool idea to bring the car out for Weekfest LA. You know, I've been trying to think of something cool to do for the show since it lines up right around the time that the Chronicles anniversary meet we usually happen. I still don't know if I'm going to do a meet this year. It doesn't look likely, but October is so busy, and since Weekfest LA is falling on that date, it's like literally on the anniversary date of when I first started the Chronicles. I thought it'd be really cool if I brought LJ Garcia's old car out for, for everyone to see. And like, for the car to make its first public appearance in, dude, 15 years? 20 years? I mean, it, ha it can't be 20 years, but probably 15 years. Probably the last time anybody saw it was at the Peterson Automotive Museum, and I doubt people even remember that, you know? So I think it'll be really cool just to bring the car out so people can see it. I don't really want to clean it up at all. I want to keep the car in the exact same condition that I shot the car in. Just because I think it's important for people to see how much the car has deteriorated. Like how much age it has, you know? Because if you would clean it up, then it kind of takes away from, from, the, from the story, I guess you can say. Because... We found the car in in torn down condition, dilapidated condition. When Angel acquired it, he didn't really clean the car, he didn't touch it. He just took whatever parts were still on the car, threw it inside the car, and then brought it back to the shop, you know, and, and it's literally just been sitting. So I think it's important to show how far the car has come along and how far it's fallen apart, you know. I think it's it's a unique perspective into a car that was so well known and so unbelievably popular for its time. Like, uh, I think one of the commenters said it best when they said it was like the Mike Tyson of the import scene back then. And it's true, you know, it was like a, a heavy hitter and it came out of nowhere, made such a big impact and then it kind of just faded away after that, you know. It's pretty cool. It's definitely royalty, I guess, in the, in, in the history of our, our car community. So it's... I think it's cool to have the car out of Weekfest LA. There's like no better place. I'm gonna try to put some more pieces back on the car because since then I've actually found the original wing for it. So I'm gonna go pick that up probably tomorrow and then in the coming days I'm probably gonna go over to Art of Attack and, and try to get some more stuff back onto the car. Like not necessarily clean it up or restore it anyway but I think it's important to have the wing on the car because you know, it was a very important part of the kit, the feels kit. And then, uh, fix the suspension so the car's not sitting all weird and tilted. Figure out a way to get the bumper back on there, like try to manipulate or try to like reshape the core support in the front so that the bumper sits on there. And I've also found a hood for it. So it's one of the hoods that was on that car. That car had so many hoods. It had uh, like an invader hood, invader hood. VS, VIS hood, and then it had a Kaminari hood, which was probably the worst hood for that car, in my opinion. And it also had an OEM carbon hood, so it was. I was debating whether or not to uh, find a OEM style carbon hood for 9698EK, or if I could find the Invader one to put the Invader hood on the car, because the style of that hood suits that car for that period of time, so I think it's kind of perfect. Um, other than that, probably gonna take some trash out of it you know <laughs> it'd be nice to kind of get the trash out of the inside of the car I like again I'm not gonna clean it anyway so I think it's, it's so cool for you guys to be able to go to a car show in 2021 and see that car so that's the goal and I'm gonna try to document the process because I think it's a really cool process for those of you that do care about the car you'll get to see how it slowly comes back together a little bit until if you do go to the show, until you see it in person for yourself. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy the journey. It's going to be a crazy month. I have Weekfest Seattle too, so i got to manage to squeeze in all these projects and squeeze in all these jobs before the LA show happens. 
and uh, hopefully you guys come and check out LG Garcia's old car, you know. One of the other things that I wanted to do to commemorate the the display of LJ's car at Weekfest LA is to make one of these lean customs pins for it. Like these guys are, they helped me make uh, Duras pin back then and the Battlecraft DK. These things are super popular. Like people loved collecting them, so I thought it'd be cool to kind of turn LJ Garcia's car into one of these collectible pins. And this is the, the rendering that, that Hansel from Lean came up with. I really like what he did with it. Originally when we did the, the render for it, he, we forgot to put the wing because I think he, I showed him the photo of the car and he thought that I wanted the pin to be the car in its present condition without the wing. But since I was getting the wing back, hopefully, um, I wanted to put the wing back on there so I threw that back on. And then I like what he did with the box flares to make the car pop and stuff. So it looks pretty true as a caricature to LJ's car, you know. And then my responsibility for this job was coming up with the backing card for it. And I wanted the backing card to look like an import tuner cover. Because obviously that's when the car uh, was the most popular, even though it was in its blue stage back then. I don't like the, the Super Street cover for it just because uh, at that point the car was just yellow and it was like very basic looking. So I wanted it to take it back to the import tuner days. And so I made a card that resembled that. So it has the original cover text on it, even down to the Flex and Feels Japan Spec Wide Fender Body Kit thing. I really liked how that looked, so I included that back onto the card from the import tuner cover. And then I laid out text here to make it look more like the cover and stuff. And you know, you, I mean, if you guys followed import tuner back then in the early 2000s, you'll understand how the style comes together and why it looks like this. And these will be available. I'm, I think I'm gonna make 250 of them and then We'll make them available to the public and stuff. And it'll be kind of like a cool collector's piece, you know? That ties everything together. It was like, who would make a pin of this car in 2021? So. I don't know why I'm here. That's why she invited us, just so we can take photos. Oh, you're not even taking the photo? No, it's you're just, just that holder. See the oh, same it's the phone holder? <laughs> dick out of it, so. So just a quick update. I showed up to the shop today and received a package in the mail, which is always great. Um, huge huge shout out to a mr fred smith jr for sending me this the box is in terrible condition which i am sure it came this way but the contents inside is also in terrible condition but the good thing about it is i wanted it to be in terrible condition <laughs> so after i posted the after i posted up about lj garcia's car for the mcguire's post blah, blah blah somebody hit me up and was just like hey i actually have two racing car c5 center caps laying around that i'm not using and he was like i would love to see them on lj's car and i would love for them to go to a good home so 
he actually donated these to me so that we can get them back on on the car. These are, are obviously not the original caps from LJ's car, but he just happened to have two spare caps. They're missing the, the lock nut. I don't know what the, the terminology is for it, but originally um, <clears throat> some a bunch of people told me about somebody that was reproducing C5 and Racing Heart Center caps. And it turns out it's a guy that I've known all along. He was a cord guy with me back in the day, Craig. And uh, I'm going to try to contact him to see if he can get the, the lock nut rings for me so that we can get these onto two of the other C5s on LJ's car that's missing the caps. I don't know what happened to those caps. Like, uh, Angel doesn't know. When he picked up the car, they were already missing the caps. So this will help to complete the package a little bit. There's two of them, as I said. And again, they are not in great condition, but... It's important because uh, LJ's wheels aren't in great condition. Like the C5s, they show their, they have their wear. They're oxidized, they're not perfect. I don't plan to make them perfect again. And that's why it's kind of cool that we have caps that are also worn down and in an aged condition. So it kind of suits the wheels. I might, I'm gonna throw them on probably next week when I stop by over there and try to get stuff going on the car. But I think these might end up going quite well with those wheels since they're they're all kind of worn. I've got to find the hardware for it. Is there hardware for it? I don't even remember. I got to look at the photos. But there's definitely something that holds them in place. But anyways, huge thank you to Fred Smith, Fred Smith Jr. You can tell that he sent these out right away cuz he addressed it as as Joe and uh my name is Joey. <laughs> but yeah. That's another piece of the puzzle. Two very important pieces so that when we bring the car out for Week Fest, the wheels will have caps. Because C5s look like absolute crap without center caps on them. <laughs> it's been a busy day, busy week since getting back from Seattle. Still a lot to do. I had to stop by the OC today just to uh, shoot some photos of Jen because Jen Q, because I owed her a favor for doing that import tuner thing for me uh, a couple months ago for the Maguire's thing. So I went and shot her real quick. Didn't take very long just because I'm so used to shooting her that the photos of her usually come out pretty great without without any type of effort, <laughs> which is always nice. But uh, stop by to get some coffee since I'm in the OC and we don't really have a fills where I'm at. So grab some iced coffee and you're gonna go sit in an hour in traffic and then get back to work. I do have some good news though. I finally picked up LJ Garcia's old fields wing. It was a, a bit of a task to get just because the guy's so busy, so it's hard to get a hold of him. But we met up like late last night, like probably like one in the morning, and I grabbed the wing from him. And I'll show you guys when I get back to the shop what it looks like. Like the car, it's also not in great condition, but it's kind of perfect in that way. Got these hex rings today from Craig, from Craig's Headers. He actually machines these replacement lock nuts and he makes these too, actually. He makes replacement caps, but since I already have the caps, all I needed was the lock ring to complete it. So, I threw it on earlier and it fit, but I'm terrible at this, so. So we have the cap complete now. Comes with some hardware too, so huge thanks to him for donating these lock rings to me to complete the project for this weekend, or this coming weekend. <clears throat> Been staying busy over here, trying to figure out more things to do for the actual physical display of LJ's car at Weekfest for my booth. So I actually ordered like a fancy new booth setup with like a backdrop and stuff so it's not like like the usual canopies and stuff that everybody likes to run at events because you know like the guys at week fest and we all came to the decision that when we want to do show displays i think it's better to like kind of look at it more from like a like a convention type of format instead of just doing pop-up tents you know and just because it, it makes the show 
look better if people have more well thought out displays and so that's we've been working on that getting better every year at it and even for my booth I think I'm trying to elevate how things look now aesthetically so um, having LJ's car there is going to be cool but I also have a new booth display which is going to be really cool today I spent most of the day working on this um, display board that I'm going to have displayed next to LJ's car or LJ's old car and I figured that a lot of people are going to be at the show and the moment they walk into Weekfest they're going to be wondering why there's this Civic that's sitting there that's like looks a little dated you know like styling wise it doesn't really like compare to the cars of today you know so I figured I'd give a little bit of a backstory for people that are that are there that haven't seen the car before and you know just like as a as a refresher for people that have seen the car before too but don't know the history about it too much so I think it's important to have a display there just because it makes sense to provide more information for this build instead of just people seeing it and wondering why it's there and then casually walking along. I think it adds to the lure, you know, of the car. And people are definitely going to see it, like the car. No matter what year or what time period it exists in, it's going to stand out. And that's kind of like the point of why LG built it in the first place, because the car just... You can't not see this car. So I made this display board. I made it yellow just to <laughs> kind of make it resemble the the yellow tint that's on the car so it has like a yellow tint to the overall look of the board itself. I laid out the two magazine features just because I thought these are the two most important magazine features. It had like, I think it was like maybe like four or five magazines but the other two were overseas and these are the most uh, memorable ones I guess you can say. Super Street Cover, when it was full yellow and before that, which is my favorite stage of the car, was when it was cobalt blue. And I actually have very detailed images of the features, and I'm, I'll try to show them to you guys right now, just so you guys who aren't familiar with the car get to see some of the details when the car was like in its like prime prime. Like, the car was beautiful at that time. And uh, I wish like whoever does eventually restore this car, restores it back to the blue stage, because that was when the car looked the best, you know. For the display board, I I laid out some text and then magazine covers and then the bottom quote right here that says feels good but do, don't touch. That's actually a, a quote that that LJ put on a signboard on his engine bay when whenever he showed the car because he really didn't want people to touch the car, you know, just because there was all kinds of stuff on it and and uh, it was like it's it's punny, you know, and like it makes sense. <laughs> So I decided to add it onto the board just to give it uh, like a, a throwback to the people that have seen the car before. They definitely know this quote because they will have remembered it. And uh, use the traditional Fields logo for it and everything. So a lot of detail touches in here. Nothing too elaborate with the board just because I figure people are going to be walking by it and then they're going to glance and then they're going to, if they are interested, they'll read through it. But I don't want to make it too wordy, you know. And, and it'll give you a good idea of, of why the car is even there in the first place. Like, why is it at Wheatfest? And why is it being displayed, like, two decades later, you know? While I have all these images already loaded up, I figured I'd show you guys the old import tuner feature. This was, again, when the car was at its peak, I feel. Like, before the yellow tint went on, and then it got overly yellow, you know? It had a yellow interior, but at that point it was more of a contrast touch than than a, like a full-on, full-scale theme. Yeah, you can see here the giant Racing Heart C5 logo on the side of the car. And uh, it was a big deal to have this kit back then because no one had ever seen it before, especially here in the US. And they did some, they shot some beautiful photos of this car in the studio. Yeah, this car just looked amazing for its time. It was a Feels 9-piece wide body kit and you know, at first I was just like, why is it nine pieces? So I started counting. I was like, one, two, three, like four panels, right? Thump bumper, rear bumper, half lip, wing. And then I was, I couldn't figure out why it was nine pieces, but then I forgot to count the side skirts, which makes it nine pieces. <laughs> the wheels are the same 19 inch Racing Heart C5s purchased from Daz Motorsports. And then here was the engine bay when it was B series. It was a B series NA at the time with just nitrous. There was no turbo. And then eventually it went to H swap. But yeah, it was, a, it was just a very 
clean engine bay for its time, you know? There was no crazy wire tugs, but stuff was definitely moved around. The harness was, like, moved slightly so that it wasn't just, like, all over the place, you know? <laughs> and here you can actually see that the car is blue, so... A lot of people used to think that this car was purple, but it's definitely more of a blue tone. And it was painted by 2020 Auto Body with 15 coats of House of Color Candy Cobalt Blue. So I can see why it looks kind of purplish, but it's definitely a blue. The sound system at the time before I went to the three sub setup it was much more simple. Just had a false floor, and two walls, it had bare brakes, it had reupholstered Sparco seats. Eventually, they went to these were moved to the back, I think, and then he had two new seats back here. So there was actually at one time four racing seats in this car. And eventually, when they went to the three sub setup, there was no back seats at all. There was no rear interior. And here is the, the last page of the feature, featuring Francine D's stats. She was 20 years old at the time, which probably makes her around 42 now? And... Uh, just look at this list of shops, like how many shops, how many of these are, are still around, you know? But yeah, this is a, this is one of the magazine features that got me into cars and got me into magazines and got me eventually into working for the magazine industry. Pretty cool stuff and definitely a, a very important part of history. First time seeing it? Yeah. <laughs> in all of its in its rough state. So we got the hood now. Borrowed some headlights from Dwayne so you can take those yellow things off. And then and the wing is right here. First thing to do now is figure out why the car sits weird in this rear area. And then, you think we should roll the window up for the show? Yeah, it looks, probably it looks better. Yeah, because it looks horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I just take the door panel off and I just push it up, I guess. He did the power window conversion. <laughs> At least that's done, right? <laughs> Oh, sick. It still has a switch box in there. I didn't even see this. Look at that thing. Yeah. He used to always like air the car up and down at shows. I don't know why he thought that was like cool. Like video games. Yeah. That's all he did oh, all day. So <laughs> <laughs> huh. I didn't even notice that was in there. The holes right here. They just tape like metal screwed it. Like tap uh, screw. Yeah, there's, like, there's tap screw holes, I think. Yeah. What the? But then on the bottom side. That is it. So how? I guess we'll. Um, ooh, it still matches for sure. It's weird because the holes there, but it's oh, almost shit. like. I would kind of go with the wing up. Right. It changes the look of the car. <laughs> It's almost like they never mounted the wing after they painted it because there's no scratches here on the paint. Huh. And then the, hole, <laughs> the holes that have the self-tap whatever. Uh -huh. No, but they had to have, right? Maybe on the underside? I wonder how it mounts on the underside. There's another... It's just so good, damn heavy that it's yeah, like... Yeah, we have to hold it at the same time as we lift the thing. Yeah. <laughs> but, man, the wing is pretty good though. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's just like the one clamp right here. Does that mean there's one on the front too? No, the front's hammered. It's like slammed. Okay. So I guess so they just need one rear one. How did they get? 
How did we get it up? Maybe that's what the airline is for? Not the Tucked Angel. Yeah, I don't know. So if we take the dike off now. Yeah, it should drop it. It's on there. It's like a little baby dike too. Oh, oh my God. Oh. All right. Dude, these, this old air suspension setup is crazy. Yeah. Because it's like a universal fitment kind of deal. Uh -huh. So it doesn't even have a top hat that has the two bolts or two studs for Civics. That's why it just has that giant It's just a giant nut. nut. Yeah, it just goes through a hole and just I think Freddie did this back That's in crazy. the day from auto fashion. This is just how it was back in the then. Yeah, before they had kits, you know? Yeah. yeah. Shit, it works. Yeah, so I guess we should try putting it down. Yeah. Do we want to bolt this down? <laughs> <laughs> if we don't bolt this down, it might hit the wheel? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if I can find anything. Might as well just kind of like... Yeah, it's try to button it all up. <clears throat> so this was the only thing, huh? This tire is this a two fifteen thirty five nineteen? <laughs> this is still the original tire from two thousand five when he got his B of Goodrich sponsorship. <laughs> Those tires are the jam, man. It's, it's, like, it's like they've never even been driven on. One thing for Ziggler. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Can you get me? I don't know. Whatever you're getting. <laughs> Spicy deluxe. Oh, yeah, that sounds perfect. Yeah, that sounds perfect. And, so, and what? And a Coke, please. Oh, hey, when you guys got the car, did you, how did you guys put the vice grip on the strut to get it, to keep, there. that's what's keeping the car up the whole it time. Might have already been there. Maybe oh, it was already there like that? This is holding the suspension up. <laughs> yeah, so that was the whole thing. Dude, we never touched it, so oh. that uh, must have been on there before we got to it. I was thinking we were gonna have to take the whole shit off and then like try to figure out what the hell's going on in there with a the bag and oh, everything. Oh, how funny, so you just popped that off? Yeah, yeah just popped it off. We hope so, we're gonna put the wheel back on right now. So now it just won't go back up. Yeah, it'll never go back up again. But I wonder if we might need to use it just to get it on the trailer or something. Hmm. Let's see if it rolls. Huh? Yeah, please. Yeah, let's see if it rolls. We'll just push it back and forth. Yeah. <laughs> right, let's see. Moment of truth. Let's see how low it is. Is it going to be lower than Carl? Oh. Oh, sick. Did it do it? Yes. Oh, yeah, there we go. Does it sit on it though? Is that fun? Oh no, it's should clear. Yeah. No. Oh, it's doing it. Yeah. Back in business. Yeah. Hell yeah. Oh yeah, it's the rolls. <laughs> yep. Nice. Yeah, it looks better already. It actually fits a lot better than I thought it would. Okay, I'm gonna go get a hammer and something to kind of massage it. Yeah. When was the last time this thing had a hood on it? Huge thanks to Dwayne from our compound for the assist with this one. Unfortunately, the headlights don't fit. I just want to say I'm not a body guy. Yeah. None of us are body guys, so. But I have, you know, got some race cars back on the track. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I wonder if I can like... This goes down. 
Yeah, it needs to be flat, right? So yeah. Using it. You should look at another EK for reference. There's one over there. <laughs> yeah, it looks pretty straight. Yeah, make it look like that. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I wonder if I could try it this way, like metal. This one's already f***ed anyways. Yeah. Oh. The we paint flakes. A, yeah. We don't have a metal dolly thing. Yeah. But, I don't know. It's pretty, um... I mean, if he's ever going to redo anything, he's going to have to cut the core support off anyways. So, yeah. look at it that way. Yeah. Look at the paint. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> it's very slightly better, maybe. It's, I don't know. It's not even more so that much a hood. It's the bumper doesn't fit on there with, with, with it like that. Mm, with the the bumper, this little yeah. this crumple right here, right? Yeah. I wonder if I have to get two metal hammers to like really get that. that it's not going to really work with this sandwich. one. sandwich, yeah. Yeah, I don't want Slip it in the fender first. Yeah. Yeah, because the fender has like a little bit. Here's like a little piece that like strengthens it. Mm. That's for sure closer. I wonder if I. Oh. No, those headlights. Both the headlights are kind of. Yeah. So you can tuck the headlight over the bumper. Yeah. yeah. It's like tuck it up just to shove the bumper where it needs to go. Yeah. The other side's fine, right? Yeah, the other side's fine. It's just, it's So, car's back on the ground now. Ride height is figured out. Luckily, that didn't take too long. Got the caps on now. Got the lock rings on. Now it's just a matter of uh, taking some of this junk out of the car and making it slightly more presentable. I said I was going to leave the car untouched and unchanged for the show and leave it dirty, but I also don't think that the Las, Vegas, uh, Los Angeles Convention Center wants to wrap poop on their floors, so you have to clean up a little, at least. This 
this is where we're at now. The car's getting pretty close. I'd like to say that it's about 90%. The car looks so much different with the wing on it and sitting at the right height now. It's just a matter of cleaning up all this filth that's inside. And then we're gonna pick up the car tomorrow, clean up some more over at my place, and then we'll be good to go for the show. Look at this long ass suspension control box that he had. LJ used to flip the switches at car shows all the time. That's why he had this extended range <laughs> cable. So crazy. What a weird time to be alive back then. But yeah, we're almost there. Okay. <laughs> 